Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I'm putting together Sub-Zero's new mask from the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie. Now, I've made a bunch of different masks over the years. It's kind of what I'm known for, and I've worked for a lot of different companies behind the scenes. But normally, when I work professionally, I hand sculpt, mold, and resin cast, and so a lot of the projects will take days, if not weeks, to complete. And maybe that's not always what you need, or I don't know who needs to hear this, but maybe your project doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done. And so if you've got like an upcoming movie premiere, or if you've got a convention and last minute you've decided to go as a character, your costume maybe doesn't need to be completely accurate, but from six feet away, it needs to be good enough for cosplay. Now, to also go along with this mask, there's a free PDF file that you can download directly from my website and build right along with me. So I wanna show you what it takes to do a one day build on Sub-Zero's mask. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is measure out the approximate dimensions on my face so I can get the right size for the mask. Like most of my builds, this is drawn directly onto some Bristol board with a pencil so I can get a basic template. This quick reference prototype is usually thrown together pretty fast and it doesn't need to be accurate, it just needs to give me a decent size for the overall finished piece. The cheek pattern is traced onto some 6mm HD foam with a pencil, and notice I have all the individual cutouts and details in their own little segments. After the complete design had been drawn onto the foam, I also mark the sections that need to be cut out. I cut out the main pattern using a large utility knife and then switch over to a smaller hobby knife to remove the final details. If your cuts here are not perfect, it's no big deal. You can clean them up with a wood burning tool or your rotary tool later on. Sub-Zero's mask has a ton of ornate details on either side and to achieve those, I'm gonna be using a wood burning tool. Like always, if you're heating up or burning foam, you always wanna wear your respirator. Now this process will take you a while, but just work with a slow and steady hand. If you do happen to mess up, just call it battle damage later on. I then switch over to a round tip and I start to form the shapes around the circles on either side. The whole thing here is to use the wood burning tool to give this 6mm foam some dimension. And you'd be surprised how far you can cut or burn down into the foam to really separate those layers. Switching over to a leaf shaped spatula bit, I can really start to define all those intricate little details that the mask has. And because the heat of this tool is set to the highest temperature, I'm barely pressing into the foam at all. This tip is great because I can use the flat part to knock down the foam to a single height, but then I can flip it over and use the detailed tip to make some intricate little marks. I'm just continuing to work my way around the mask until all of the detailed areas have been burned out. The big thing here is don't get discouraged if all the details don't match perfectly, because they don't need to. This mask just needs to look good enough from four to six feet away. Next, I transfer part B onto some four millimeter HD foam. This foam piece is cut away with a hobby knife, and then I freehand sketch the ridgeline detail all around the perimeter. The wood burning tool is used once again to trace this line, and I'm going to use my sanding drum later on to define the edge. Part C is also traced onto some 4mm foam, and I make sure to flip and reverse it so I have it for both sides. Just like the nose detail, I also sketch and burn a perimeter line around these pieces as well. Using my rotary tool, I now remove foam from the interior of the line that I burned. This will make the outside ridge of these pieces a lot more prominent and will give more dimension to the mask. During this time, I'm defining the layers that are in the mask and I'm removing some of the material near the nose so that it sits back at an angle. The rotary tool is also used to sand down all the edges on the cuts and round over the outside. The heat gun can now be used to heat seal the foam and start to manipulate all the pieces. This will include rounding over the bridge for the nose and the sides of the mask. Part B can now be glued on using some Bob Smith super glue. Part C can now also be glued to the side of the mask. And if you notice, I start by gluing the front and then round the mask over and then glue on the back. This will make sure that the side of the mask keeps that curve and will conform more to your face. To make sure that the chin of the mask keeps its shape, I'm gonna glue on a strip of two millimeter HD foam. Just like part C, this small strip being glued down while the mask is curved will make sure that it retains this shape. Part D is transferred onto some two millimeter foam and cut out along with part E. I also go ahead and transfer part F onto the two millimeter foam six times. To start, I center part D onto part E, and then I weigh these down with some one, two, three blocks. 
I can now glue down all the individual Part F pieces making sure to line them up with that central line. Part G is also traced and cut out of the 2mm foam and then added to the top. With the mouthpiece section complete I can now start to attach it to the back of the mask. After the bottom and top have cured I can then mark and cut off the excess foam on the sides. All of the individual ribs can now be glued down to the back side and this adds a ton of detail to the front of this mask. On the chin there's a little bit of a build up detail and I just achieved this by gluing down some small strips of 2mm foam. Switching over to a stone bit on my Dremel rotary tool I can now start to add some wear and tear and battle damage. Be selective when you do this, you don't want to do it all over, just enough to break up the shapes. Here you can see from prototype to final build, and what's awesome is that a bunch of these details were just put in with a wood burning tool. Just like the bottom of the mask, I go ahead and add a couple strips to the sides just to help the mask conform to my face a little bit better. To seal this mask, two light coats of Plasti Dip are going to be applied to the entire surface. After the Plasti Dip had been allowed to cure, some Rust Oleum hammered metal was sprayed on and left to dry. To weather and age this mask, I'm going to start by applying a wash of Liquitex Mars Black. This paint is applied over the entire surface with a 1 inch mop brush and then I use a damp paper towel to remove a lot of the excess paint. This is just trying to make sure that this paint gets down into all those details that have been burned into the foam. To add some color to the details of the mouthpiece I'm going to be using FX brand Beta Blue. This paint can be applied directly out of the jar with a filbert brush. To give this mask that metallic blue look, I'm going to be mixing together two colors, FX brand Saber Blue and Liquitex Iridescent Bright Silver. Now these mixed paints are not drastically changing the colors of this mask, they're just subtly shifting the hues and making it look more interesting than it just being silver. Using a liner brush and more of my watered down Mars Black, I can now start to go back and define the battle damage and outline the details that have been inscribed into the foam. Like most of my builds, this mask is made completely out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials, and that's a fantastic way for you to help support me and my channel, is to pick up some HD foam and go through those links that are in the description section, or those that are on my website, because I do receive a small vendor affiliate, and what that does is allow me to build awesome things like this and show you how to do it. Using Liquitex Iridescent Rich Silver, I can now start to highlight specific sections on the mask. This paint is applied to parts of the mask that would receive directional highlighting. I take a template that I traced from the side of the mask and I cut it in about a quarter of an inch all the way around. This is then transferred onto some t-shirt like material. Using a cutting wheel I remove the material, then I can apply some hot glue to the top and the bottom of the middle of the mask. Some low temp hot glue is good enough for this type of an application and it's cool enough that I can press it down with my hands. I work my way around the interior until all of the cutouts from the original design have been covered. I cut out two more thin strips of 2mm foam, these are going to be glued to either side on the interior of the mask. Taking a cloth mask I push the elastic straps through either side, this is a super simple way to get this mask to attach to your face. And because of the double cloth layers, this is a cool way to add an accessory to any of the masks you'd already have to wear out in public.
so you all can see the steps that I took to put together Sub-Zero's mask. Now, like I said in the beginning, sometimes it's more important that a project be done than that project be perfect, especially if you're just doing this for fun and you wanna to go to a movie premiere or you wanna do a last minute cosplay or you just wanna to go to the store. So if you guys are building any of my builds or using HD phone, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram so I can see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD phone.